Hi everybody, I'm very glad to be back. I'm really sorry about yesterday. Uh, I usually try not to take a Monday off, uh, and usually Monday's not, not much goes on. But it, it, yesterday was brutal. I was like, why? Why today of all days? So um, I wanted to make sure I got a stream today, which is why it's a little bit earlier than usual. Also, while I'm working on the Black Panther 2 trailer uh, breakdown, uh, I was like, but I was like, I should do this first. First of all, I thought if I did it now, I could get as many people as possible. Uh, if you're on the West Coast, it's it's noon. Uh, um, thanks, Reagan. Uh, that's such a cute photo. If it's the East Coast, it's like in the afternoon. And then also Europe. I got you guys in here. You know, it's like what, like eight o'clock, nine o'clock for you? Maybe even some other people. Um, so I'm trying to, you know, I think three o'clock is a good time to hit as many time zones as possible. Uh, Calvin, that sounds like a delicious snack. Uh, so we have a lot of great stuff to go over today. Uh, this is actually a pretty darn good uh, group of stories. I was impressed with how well this came uh, about. Uh, Andrea, it's, it's uh, a year. Fantastic. You got your uh, year badge. I love it. Uh, hey, wandering South in France and or Orleans. At first, I was like, New Orleans, isn't that like my time? And I was like, no, it's in France. How wonderful. So, uh, yeah, we have three great stories to go over. And then the black pa Also, if I waited to do the live stream, <coughs> I was concerned that like a, a big story would break and then my my live stream would be set. And I was like, but if the stories are ready now, just just go now. Uh, so, so we'll see. And then if the big story breaks this afternoon, uh, I'll just make a separate video about it. But the Black Panther 2 breakdown, as I said, I've already filmed it and it should go up. Uh, it'll go up by, by this evening for sure. So uh, the way live streams work, I'm fine, uh, Eloy. I, I, I wasn't sick or anything. Uh, I just had a personal thing that I, I was like, so I had to take care of it and I could only do it on Monday. I tried to do it on Saturday but I could not do it on Saturday. So I had to do it Monday. Uh, Barbie Minaj says, Dottie confirmed for Coven of Chaos. Yeah, because remember, uh, hey, hey, Trickle, Trickle Heart. Uh, remember, uh, Agatha is now just like a member of the, of the community. Uh, so she's probably friends with Dottie. Hey, Hasno, which will be funny because, uh, you know, Dottie's going to have a rough time. Mika, my finger is good. The blister went away. I have a little fresh baby skin. Mwah, it's very cute. <laughs> And my feeling and my finger came back. So I'm quite happy. I was really nervous that I lost all, because they said, don't put, I, I always put ice on a burn. And then I looked up online how to fix it. And the online, it was like, never put ice on it. You'll, you know, it could give you like frostbite and you could lose the, it could do nerve damage. And I was like, oh my God, I've had ice on it for an hour. And then I kept putting ice on it anyway, because it hurt too much. <laughs> So I was really scared that I killed all the nerve endings in my thumb, but it is fine. All right, so um, we're going to do the three stories of the day, and then uh, um, and, and mustard, Calvin. Uh, who said red, red and slim? Mustard on a burn seems like a trick. Uh, so, so anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to do the three stories of the day, and then at the end of the stream, as always, you can ask me anything that you would like for 10 minutes, and then I'll do shout-outs. And I know I haven't done an open for all stream in a while, I'm going to do that on Friday. So on Friday afternoon, uh, early, it'll be early on Friday. Um, we'll do a, we'll do a, I'll do a live stream that anyone can comment in. Hey, Evan. So if you are not a member and you're watching, you'll be able to comment on Friday. So mark your calendar. It'll probably be around 12 or one o'clock, uh, Eastern standard time on uh, Friday. All right, let's get going. We have so much great stuff to discuss. All right. Story number one, boop. All right, so I couldn't believe this story broke yesterday. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? I am going to drag Michael Waldron. Get excited, Danny, because I was pretty upset about this news. Uh, hey, Matt. By the way, side note, Matt, I don't know if you saw on Twitter, Matt made a wonderful action figure of me, and he sent it to me, and it arrived, and I will get it. I have to pick it up, um, and I will bring it on the stream. It'll make an appearance. <laughs> no, I don't want to open it. Oh, I can just show the box. All right, so anyway. All right, so, but Matt, that was very kind of you, and I can't wait to go uh, get it so I can see it. 
All right, so I also almost started to talk about Michael Waldron in my Black Panther 2 trailer breakdown because I was like, oh, I trust Ryan Coogler and not many other people these days in the MCU. Hey, Gritter Plays. But I was like, why are you having this discussion here? This is the discussion you should be having in the Secret Wars Michael Waldron topic. So let's have it. All right, so Michael Waldron, it was announced yesterday. They said, oh, they met with a lot of people. And you're like, and none of them was good? And you went with Michael Waldron? So they were like, oh, Michael Waldron got the gig. Now, Michael Waldron was flying high after Loki, as he should have, as he should have. Um, Mika says the Rick and Morty pipeline to Marvel must be broken. I don't know, Mika. It gave us Jessica Gao, who kind of completely messed up She-Hulk. So I would turn that pipeline off, quite frankly. I'd be like, you know, Rick and Morty is very popular with a niche group. I don't know how much of a ratings juggernaut it is. I guess Kevin Feige watches Rick and Morty, and he's like, hilarious, maybe. But um, Michael Feige's quite the, quite the kingmaker. I think I booped the story, D. Uh, but anyway, uh, and then I, I, I took a minute to talk about Matt's action figure. So anyway, uh, so but Loki was quite good. Hey, Hannah. Uh, let's see here. Way Harris says, some say that Waldron has something on Feige. That's hilarious. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I mean, Loki was really good, to be fair. Loki was excellent. I loved Loki. But Multiverse of Madness was crap. Oh, it was so bad. Who wrote some, uh, Juan says, Waldron wrote Multiverse of Madness in two weeks. <laughs> it shows. I hope he just needed more time. Well, that's interesting that you should say that. So let's talk about Michael Waldron's Multiverse of Madness script before we get to the next part of this conversation. So it was bad enough that both he and Sam Raimi admitted that they did not, that they, um, uh, hey, Big D, I, 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 that's funny. Uh, that, I'm glad you got a gifted membership. But anyway, um, both Sam Raimi and Michael Waldron said they didn't watch WandaVision. They're like, we got some notes from Marvel, but we didn't watch WandaVision, we, even though we were making the sequel. And you're like, that's weird. But they didn't watch Wanda. WandaVision, which is why Wanda seems like she had a personality transplant in uh, Multiverse of Madness, and she still made it make a billion dollars. Part of the reason I think Michael Waldron's still a hot, a hot screenwriter is because the movie made almost a billion dollars. But I'm like, Wanda could have just read the phone book, man, and done some cool finger movements, and it still would have made a billion dollars. People just love Wanda, myself included. So... They didn't watch WandaVision. But then one of the worst things that I saw, which I thought was really bad that he said, was they were like, hey, Michael Waldron, why'd you put the Illuminati in Multiverse of Madness? And he honestly said, and I guess kudos to him for him being honest about it, he was like, I couldn't think of what else to do at that point in the movie, so <laughs> I brought in the Illuminati. And you're like, oh, okay. Uh, how, how does that happen? I mean, I guess it's, it was a good idea to have the Illuminati in the movie, but they did nothing with it. It was such a poorly executed idea that I'm not surprised that someone was like, did it, did it as a last minute fix because they were like, I don't know what to do with the script next. So I'm nervous because Multiverse of Madness didn't deliver on any of the promises. Now, to be fair, there was another version of it that tested so poorly. I heard a story that someone was there uh, I can't, I can't say what their comments were because that would out who they were, but let's just say they were like, this is awful. And so the movie, as you know, as I was like the first to report was significantly reworked. So maybe that one was really good. And maybe we're all being very mean to Michael Waldron. Maybe Michael Waldron has incredible, maybe that's what he has on Feige, that his movie was, uh, really good. Does my audio sound off to anyone else? I, um, I moved my microphone and I accidentally hit some of the buttons. How about now? Does it sound better now? I noticed it was a little off when I was filming. It, sound, it sounds scratchy? That sounds worse? How about, how about now? Do I sound better? Oh no, you guys liked it better before? Hold on. Okay. Does that work better now? I don't know why it's... Oh, yes! Oh, there we go. Oops. My volume was turned up. How about now? Now oh, it should be fine. Okay. My bad. All right. 
It's a lot of work making videos. You know, it's like so many little things that you got to pay attention to. All right. Okay. All right. Tyler says, Michael Waldron has good ideas, but can't execute them well. Yeah, maybe he should have a, a writing partner. That's not a bad idea. All right. So anyway, uh, Multiverse of Madness, I feel, didn't deliver ultimately on any of the promises of the movie. We were all excited about it. It was supposed to be, I mean, I think another reason that the movie, it's like why Captain Marvel made a billion dollars, because it was between the two Avengers movies. It was in the middle of an Avengers sandwich. And I feel that's the same reason Iron Man 3 made a lot of money because it was coming right after an Avengers movie and everybody was like, I love Marvel so much. And Multiverse of Madness really benefits from coming after uh, No Way Home. And No Way Home was so incredible and had so many Easter eggs in it. Um, Bo Abdullah, I don't think Sam Raimi is directing Secret Wars unless the story just literally broke, but I haven't heard anything about it. Uh, but, you know, it just, as, you know, as... Um, as Danny just pointed out, they only went to two universes in a multiverse of madness. Uh, it just, you know, it just, it didn't deliver on the hype. It was supposed to be this, it was supposed to be Marvel's, you know, Marvel Studios, Marvel Proper's No Way Home. And it wasn't that at all. Uh, that's what Secret Wars is actually supposed to be. Uh, but I have some concern that if Michael Waldron couldn't deliver on Multiverse of Madness, is he going to be able to deliver on Secret Wars? Also, he does a very poor job with female characters. Hey, Martin Anderson. And now I'm worried about She-Hulk. She-Hulk should be a major character in Secret Wars. Uh, I think she will definitely be in that movie and because she, she's in a big part of the first comic. You know, not the most recent Secret Wars, but the very first one. And I'm like, you know, and especially since Jessica uh, Gao also comes from Rick and Morty, will he just double down on like She-Hulk's like, wah, wah, and you're going to be like, oh, I don't know what's, you know, you know, it's like uh, Debbie Downer. That's, you know, like what She-Hulk has turned, been turned into. Uh, let's see, I had a question here. I know Juice says the thing is, wouldn't he have to watch multiple movies to prepare for Secret Wars? He was supposed to watch WandaVision, you know, like he does. Yeah, I, I, maybe that's the point you're trying to make. I know Juice. But it's like he didn't watch even WandaVision. I mean, I, I'm just very nervous. He has to read a lot of comics. He's got to watch a lot of movies. Jack Foster says, I'm really hoping Secret Wars plays more seriously and dramatic than the projects that are setting it up, and that's why I'm worried. No way. I mean, uh, still to date, my favorite Marvel movie is Avengers Endgame because of, of the scope and the epicness of it. And it did have dark moments. Uh, but Secret Wars should just be lots of fighting, you know? And I think that's fantastic. I think that's like a, a great recipe for a movie. Eloy says, like the volume so my neighbors can hear you too. That's right. It's movie news for everybody. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Way Harris says, I think better two universes than 10 universes to disappoint us all. You know, Way Harris, I, I appreciate you sticking up for the movie in a very nice way. Seelob says, hey, Grace, where's movie math? I can't believe that you, <laughs> that's very nice of you that you did a super chat to ask about movie math. If I do a movie math this week, it'll be tomorrow because I'm focusing on the Black Panther 2 trailer today. Uh, let's see here. Ross says, writing television and film are different skills. Wanda, Jennifer Walters, and Hope are all female characters that deserve justice in this movie. You're talking about uh, the Wasp, right? I don't know. With Michael Waldron, it makes me nervous. It makes me very nervous. He's part of the Kevin Feige Star Wars movie, too, if that ever gets made. But here's something interesting. Here's something very interesting. I was talking to a friend of mine in the industry and I was yesterday, and I was like, I can't believe they hired Michael Waldron to, to write Secret Wars. He's trending on Twitter. He was like number 10 for a, for a little bit. I was like, he's like that's how upset people are. And my, my friend said, well, you just raised, you know, the people online just raised Michael Waldron's going rate because any screenwriter who can trend online, good or bad, has name recognition. And that is so rare for a screenwriter. People know who directors are, but very few people know who who writers are. So they're like, hate. my friend was like, hate on Michael Waldron all you want. You're driving up his going rate. Uh, Devin Henderson said the comment section was vicious yesterday. Uh, you mean like uh, on online? Tyler says, I think Loki ended strong enough to make us forget the rest was weak. Can we start a GoFundMe to pay him not to write Secret Wars? Uh, that's funny. Um, the one and only PMG says, I thought that the Russo brothers said they would come back for this. They did. And Kevin Foggy was like, don't make assumptions. You're not coming back. And I don't think they're going to hire him. I would love to see Ryan Coogler do it, but I don't think that Ryan Coogler uh, would be willing to work with 
Michael Waldron. He has his own writers and he likes to write himself. So I just don't, I don't know if he's going to do that. I'm sure maybe he wants to do something outside of Marvel. I mean, my, Ryan Coogler is an incredibly talented filmmaker. So let's talk about that for a minute. Who are the people right now in working, actively working in the MCU that I trust? I trust Ryan Coogler and I trust Destin Daniel Cretton. Those are the two people who I think are doing a good job right now. Max says, I hope you're having an amazing day. So happy to catch the stream and can't wait for the breakdown. Oh, I'm so happy, Max. Thank you. Hey, Juan, that's a nice picture. You both look nice in your pictures. Uh, so anyway, uh, I think that those are the two. Who do you guys like who's working right now? I would like to say maybe Matt Shackman. Maybe Matt Shackman. I'd like to say Kate Heron, but she quit. Uh, I'm so frustrated that these women keep quitting. Uh, they're like, I mean, as Ariel just said, you know, Kate Heron's fantastic. Yeah, that's right. And she worked with Michael Waldron on Loki. That would be good. But yeah, I think Matt Shackman, I haven't really seen him do a lot of movies, so I'm still not quite sure how I feel about his, you know, I mean, about, um, his ability to do a, a movie. John Watts, you know, Matthew, I feel a little bit better about John Watts after, I thought, I thought John Watts grew as a director in the Spider-Man movies. Because I thought the first two Spider-Man movies weren't that strong from a directorial standpoint. But I thought that No Way Home had some really beautiful... Uh, yeah, No Way Home had some really beautiful shots that I was really impressed with. But I still think, in terms of professionalism and scope, I think it's Cretton and Coogler. That's interesting. Who just wrote that? Millie Joe said, we need some new blood here. Yeah, I do wish... Mika, I would love for Nia DaCosta to deliver. I, but I feel she has a real uphill battle. Um, cause that movie's just wrapped in feminism and that's going to be just a real problem for it. I'm just nervous about it. I don't like all the, these, it, it's, it's very difficult to be thrust into these hateful situations and have to navigate that. Like when everyone turns on a movie, it's really not good. Or when large groups do. Like, look what happened to Wonder Woman 1984. I thought Wonder Woman 1984 had big problems, but I didn't think it was that bad. And that was just became a swirling vortex of doom. And it's really frustrating when movies do this to themselves. But so those are the two that I think are best. But here's what's interesting also to me. Uh, I think that Marvel is expanding a little bit too much. Uh, you know, they're expanding exponentially thanks to Disney+. Plus. And... You know, like, for instance, Thor, Love, and Thunder. Thor, Love, and Thunder took a little bit too long to hit digital and streaming, in my opinion. They could have had it drop in late August when nothing was happening, and we could have done a watch-along and all that good stuff. But instead, they were like, oh, we need to make Disney Plus Day even plusier. So they waited to drop it until Disney Plus Day. And they didn't even offer, like, a special deal on Disney Plus Day. So, like, who the F cares? Like, if you're not going to have a discount and you want to you motivate people to sign up for your service on a special day, then fine. But they were just like, no, we want to drop everything in the world on the same day. So um, Tiff says, I want the House of the Dragon writers to get work on these films. Well, that would be great, but they're kind of like, I think those people should go work on DC, quite frankly. It's just a different tone. So the reason I bring up Thor Love and Thunder is that I would have totally watched that again if not for the fact that I was like, I got to do She-Hulk and I have Andor and I have uh, House of the Dragon. There's just so much content these days. Uh, was it $2? So $2 for just a month isn't really much of a big deal, but I guess maybe it got people to sign up. But I feel like that's pro part of the problem. There's like so much content coming that it's hard to revisit any of it. None of the MCU content can marinate anymore. And it reminded me how people call these kinds of things, like these franchises, like the fast food equivalent of cinema. And now I think it's becoming even more like that. It's like, the, it really is like fast food. It's made very quick to order and you consume it. You don't savor it. And then you move on to the next thing. And I, I feel like I think it's a little bit of a problem. So that's like, that's the thing. But I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think, I mean, that's interesting. Paul says, and sometimes it's simply not good enough to revisit. I think a lot of people felt that way about Thor Love and Thunder, but I thought it was pretty funny at points. So I probably, if it had been, if things had been slower, I would have revisited it. That's right, Danny. Score says he was right. <laughs> Gritter Place is, I think, that it's hurting the overall quality of productions. I would agree with that, which is why Black Panther 2 looking so cinematic is, I think, a good change of pace. Uh, Matt Hughes says, how do you feel about John Watts for Secret Wars? Uh, you need someone who can direct action. 
And there was like no action in No Way Home. I mean, I'd love it to be Chad Stahelski. Wouldn't that be wonderful? They could have anyone write it. It could just be like Michael Waldron could just do chicken scratch on a page and I wouldn't care because if Chad Stahelski was there, I'd be like, it's going to be amazing. Oh, thanks, Bo. Oh, Bo, I don't think Brian Singer's ever coming back. As good a job as he might have done on some of the X-Men movies, uh, he's just too toxic at this point. Also very unprofessional. You know, it's, it's even beyond his, his behavior. Marduk, you watched rewatched Loki and Shang-Chi? I watched Shang-Chi several times. I see these movies. If movies are really good, I, I watch them um, multiple times in the theater. Like, I have, my, I have some Black Panther tickets, Black Panther 2 tickets. I'm pretty excited. Wasn't that hard to get them? If you didn't get Black Panther 2 tickets yesterday, you can still get good seats, which was, I think, surprising. They put them on sale very early. I'll still never forget Endgame. Endgame, and I think even No Way Home wasn't as big as Endgame. Avengers Endgame was still one of the most, just a side note, Avengers Endgame was still one of the most incredible experiences of my life. Avengers Endgame, the ticket sold out like in 12 hours for the entire weekend. And I'll never forget, I got, and I felt bad about where I ended up. I took my parents and I wanted them to have a really great experience. Uh, one, I like Bryce Dallas Howard for sure. Uh, and I got my parents, we got tickets to like a, like a, like a boutique movie theater, which is actually closed now in New York City. It was the CMX and there weren't enough people in the theater and they were all very quiet. So my parents were like, what's the big deal? And I was like, darn it, you didn't get the experience. So anyway, uh, I'll never forget standing in the lobby waiting for us to let everybody up. And a, a couple, I would say maybe in their 70s, came up to the ticket stand, to the ticket booth, and they were like, two tickets for Avengers Endgame, please. <laughs> and there were like six of us standing there because it was a small theater. And we were like, and the, and the ticket guy was like, it's sold out. Uh, it sold out all night. And they were like, oh, well, where do you think maybe we could go to another theater? Do you know, recommend one nearby? And everyone in the lobby was like, you can't go this whole weekend. Like, it's just sold out everywhere. And they like they just couldn't compute. They were like, what do you mean that we can't go see this movie this weekend? We were like, you, you just can't. Like, the fact that the movie was so hot that you couldn't have walk-up business for the entire weekend, even though it played, like, 24-7, that was incredible. I'll never forget it. Welm says, if Black Panther 2 turns out bad, it would be a disaster. I doubt that'll be the case, but Marvel can't afford any cracks in the armor there. Uh, I have to see the movie. I think it looks incredible. Hey, hi. Hey, Reconstruction. Devin says, also, it's like why we revisit old Marvel projects when there are always some new things that we have to prepare for. I'll tell you something else, and then we'll get on to the next story. Wow, this has been a very long story. Look at it. It's 23 minutes already. But you guys are reminding me of stuff. I rarely watch marvel and dc stuff for fun because it's work so if i want to like unwind uh my brain is too much like thinking about work if i try and watch these things like uh recreationally so but the other day i watched iron man 2 again because i was hanging out with some friends and they were like let's watch iron man 2 and i was like okay and boy it made me want to watch a whole bunch of other marvel movies i was like let's go watch the first avengers uh and then i was like oh let's go watch this one and i want to see what happens here oh look they have that tease for thor let's go watch thor uh so it was funny i think you know it really sucks you in particularly because there's a story being told but that's maybe what part of the problem now it's like these things just kind of meander there's no direction to the mcu right now and so i think that's part of the problem that they're they're suffering from Jose says, uh, Miguel Sapochnik could direct Secret Wars. You wouldn't see anything. <laughs> It'd be so dark. Oh, that's funny. Thanks, Eloy. But yeah, so it's, it's fun stuff. Fun stuff. That's right, Rashad. I would say the cohesiveness is missing. I got to tell you, though, you know, Calvin said of Captain America, the Winter Soldier, I've seen it at least 34 times now. Great movie. Really fantastic movie. My Bucky is my dad's favorite Marvel character because he likes his action scenes so much. He's like, that Bucky boy, he's great. Um, uh, but I think Captain America, New World Order, with all the Hulks in it, that's going to be a hot ticket. I'm very excited about that, actually. I hope She-Hulk shows up a little bit. That would make me so happy. I think that's going to be a hot ticket. I think people, that movie is like coming in hot. It's like, and people don't even realize how hot that movie's going to be. I'm excited. Uh, Disney moving away from Marvel TV for specials? What do you mean, Corey? All right, let's get on to the next story of the day. All right. Second story of the day. Boop. Speaking of Marvel directors. All right. So, 
Good week for Michaels, by the way. Michael Waldron. Uh, Keith says, is the Harrison Ford thing true? Um, I didn't hear about Harrison Ford specifically, but I did hear that they're trying to recast uh, General Ross, which I think is a mistake. If any, I can't, only the most hardcore comic book fans will be like, Red Hulk has to be General Ross. Who cares? It's a Red Hulk. Everybody always wondered where his mustache went. They're like, so when he turns into Red Hulk, does mustache get sucked into his face? And why does his hair turn black? It didn't make any sense. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, I don't really care who Red Hulk is. All right. So uh, Aaliyah says, instead of series, but presentations. Uh, no, no. They're just doing this one-off. This is just a... a, a I, think they're, I think that Marvel's doing holiday specials. They have this, and they have the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. And that's great. I think holiday specials are... I, I love the holidays. Anything to help make the holidays merrier uh, is welcome by me. So, yes, as I said, good week for Michaels. So Michael Waldron got uh, Secret Wars, and Michael Giacchino... Somebody told me I was mispronouncing it wrong, mispronouncing Michael Giacchino. I looked up an interview with him, and he said they said Michael Giacchino. So uh, I apologize if I'm uh, mispronouncing it. So Michael Giacchino, the reason he's on the in this and the he's on the live stream today is that he just signed with CAA for directing. He has a directing agent now. He already has an agent to represent him as a composer, and he's still with that agency, but that agency only does music. Uh, you know, composers, editors, music producers, so they don't have the capacity to, do, to represent him as a director. But that's an aggressive move. He really wants to direct. Um, he's a great composer. Werewolf by Night has an amazing soundtrack. It's very, very good. But is he good enough? to direct. Well, the review embargo lifts on uh, Thursday for Werewolf by Night, but I will, I, this gives me an excuse to talk about his directing a little bit. And I have to say, I kind of do think that he could move forward as a director. I think that he's not very good at fixing script problems uh, because the script for Werewolf by Night is awful. Like, oh my God, I looked up the writer because I was like, where'd they find this person? And she has written for some of the other shows, so I don't know how this turned out so poorly, but I was like, this is like one of the worst written things I've ever seen. But the visuals were quite strong. So I don't think he's a strong, I don't think he's a masterful enough storyteller just yet, but I think he has good ideas visually, and I think he's willing to go for it. So that's kind of exciting. So what, would he, what could he direct? Like, I think it's hard, because he's a new director, this is the first thing he ever directed, but how is he? How do you do that? How? Where do you go after an MCU special? Right? That's a big deal. How do you tell him that he should go direct an episode of Succession after that? Because honestly, I think he needs to cut his teeth on TV shows, on streaming. He could direct Stranger Things. I think he'd be very good at that. Actually, he'd actually be an excellent director for Stranger Things. Uh, but I think there's a lot of stuff that he could do that he would do an excellent job on. But he's. I don't know if he's necessarily ready for a movie. Uh, because I don't think he has a strong enough grasp of being a storyteller, uh, or else he would have fixed the script. He would have been like, uh, excuse me, let me fix this, because uh, it's just problematic. But I think that, so maybe he could do like big shows, you know, like, so even though it's a show, it's like something really hot that people are interested in. I could see that. Uh, maybe a small movie. Maybe I could see him doing a small movie. Rashad, a musical? I don't know. I don't know. There's something at the end of Werewolf by Night. I don't. I'm not going to ruin it, but when you, we'll do it. We'll talk about it in my breakdown. That's going to go up on Friday. But there's something at Werewolf by Night that is so cheesy and cliche at the end. It's very bland. It's been done so many times. I'm like shocked that they were like, oh yeah. Let's, I mean, I think that they were like, oh boy, are we smart? Wasn't is this so artistic? And you're like, not only has everyone else done this already, but there's no uh, there's no, there's no meaning behind this choice. You know, it, it, it's just purely, uh, on the surface. So I think, but that's fine. When you consider that he's a new director, I mean, it was a very film school thing to do. I guess that's how I would describe it, right? Like someone who's in film school and is like, my genius or what? And you're like, everybody's done that. How, how did you even put that in there? So, Interesting. But I do think, I have to say, even though I think he needs a lot of experience and work, he did go to film school, Danny, in fact. I think he went to like some school of visual arts. 
Sean Turner said he could direct one of the Batman spinoffs. You know, that's not a bad choice, actually, considering the atmosphere, atmospheric quality of Werewolf by Night. By the way, I can tell you that they're casting uh, the Penguin show right now for HBO or HBO Max or whatever it's going to become, which is very exciting. A lot of the car, a lot of the Falcone and Carmine Carmine families. Uh, but I think that, you know, I'd actually think he'd be a great, you know, the Arkham show that they want to do, the Arkham Asylum show. Uh, if they had a better script, I wouldn't trust Michael Giacchino with a script in any shape or form. I don't think he has the ability to say, but you know what, it's his first directing gig. I guess he didn't, maybe he didn't want to go to Kevin Feige and be like, I'm very excited for this opportunity, but this is really a bad script you handed me. Um, but I think that he would actually be excellent for the Arkham Asylum show, quite frankly. So I think he has, I think he has ability. Uh, I think he definitely has a, a direct directing talent. So good for him. And I also like that it's never too late. It's never too late to, uh, to, to, to go and pursue something or a career change. I mean, it helps when you're in a, a titan in your own field. <laughs> um, uh, Resen says, could he direct a Spider-Man? His score was great. I think he's not ready for a Spider-Man, but maybe someday. But that's it. And I wonder if other composers will start seeing if, you know, if they'll start trying to, you know, go over to directing. This has not been a path in the past. Uh, so I, I think it's very interesting. It's, it's very unusual. I don't think we've ever seen a composer do that. Uh, all right, so that is the second story of the day. Now, third story of the day. Hold on. Boom, baby. That's Casey Bloys, if you've never seen him, in a heavily, heavily Photoshopped image. <laughs> He's like a supermodel that's been Photoshopped so much. He looks like he has, they used a filter on him. That's hilarious. Uh, I love corporate headshots. You're like, what are you going to even use these for? Uh, I wish they had like not more live cinema verite photos, like in the office, like getting stuff done. Like whenever I have uh, sh photos that I include for talent behind the camera, I like to see them like in their element. Like I try to get photos of directors actually directing. Uh, uh, it's, the pandemic's been tough because it's hard for me to find photos of directors and on-set talent that doesn't, they don't have a mask on. Like I wanted to have a, a, a Gina uh, Price Blythewood uh, and I, all the photos of her on behind the scenes on the woman King, she had a, a mask on and I'm very glad she was being safe, but I wanted to show her as a director instead of just standing next to the cast at TIFF. So anyway, yeah, it's a very, it's a very funny photo. So that's his headshot. Well, it's a corporate headshot. Uh, you know, every corporate person's supposed to have one and they put it on like the pages of like, who are we? Let meet the team. You know, any corporate website has the, uh, about us and the team members and they always have photos like this. And I like that he doesn't have a tie on because he's casual. He's Hollywood. That's <laughs> so funny. He's like, yeah, uh, I like ties on men. But anyway, so Warner Brothers, but he still has the sport coat on because he still means business. All right, so Warner Brothers Discovery just re-signed this guy to another five-year deal, uh, which is great. Right now, he's now his new title is Chairman and CEO, and CEO, that's new, of content. You, be, you know, before he was chief content officer. So it's a fancy title. And I think it really highlights the, ver the brand vertical. What, I, I used vertical in a video a couple of weeks ago, and everybody was like, uh, Rashad, this is Casey Bloys. He heads up HBO and now HBO Max. Uh, and I was talking about verticals, and everybody was like, take a drink every time Grace says vertical. It's, it's business lingo. So there, in every uh, studio, you want verticals. So like Disney, the verticals are Lucasfilm, Marvel, Pixar, uh, you know, Disney, stuff like that. So Warner Brothers wants to have its own verticals. And I think HBO is very much one of its verticals. And I think this just cements that because it has a CEO. Uh, now, I do think they're probably, you know, again, they're going to try and sell this to Universal in 2024, even though David Zaslav is like, no, I'm not. You're like, how many times has he said he's not doing something? And then he turns right around and do, does it. So anyway, I think that having this guy locked in as part of the package probably makes, you know, a more attractive package. So I'm glad that they locked him in. Uh, you know, everybody's saying they're looking for the next Kevin Feige. And Casey Bloys doesn't get enough credit for his tremendous track record at HBO. I think because HBO doesn't have a single theme, that may be why people don't really pay attention to that. But when you think of just the level of quality and how HBO owns Sunday nights, 
That's really impressive. And Casey Boys has been at HBO since 20, 2004. He's coming up on his 20th anniversary there. When the company is, uh, when they can sell Warner Brothers in 2024, he'll have been there for 20 years. I'm glad you made it too, Linda. That's incredible. He started out uh, in the development team and he worked his way all the way up to the top over the years. And I think he's just done an incredible job. I mean, bef- I mean, HBO was, you know, it's not TV, it's HBO. HBO was like what streaming was before streaming came along. And uh, they continued to just dominate with White Lotus, Mayor of Easttown, uh, House of the Dragon, the upcoming um, uh, you know, Last of Us. Uh, Chernobyl. I mean, these are just incredible, 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 incredible content and incredible run. And I think Casey Bloys is worth every penny. Uh, and so Watchmen, that's right, Ivan. And so I hope that, I hope that HBO becomes even more powerful as we, uh, it, it should be. It sucks that it's divided. Um, you know, I didn't get a chance to do movie math this week, but uh, Lord of the Rings just kicked House of the Dragon's butt. It was horribly embarrassing uh, because of the fact that uh, all the, that's right, Succession, Madeline, uh, because all the viewership is in one service for Lord of the Rings, uh, Rings of Power, but yet House of the Dragon has their stuff divided between HBO proper and HBO Max, so its numbers aren't where they're supposed to be. And so this should really just be one service. HBO should be a brand. And I think it's, you know, when you think about that, it's probably the, pr- still, maybe Netflix, because Netflix has Stranger Things, but HBO really is like the premier online content generator. I can't think of anybody who has as solid and as consistent a track record. Very few flops. You know, every other streaming service puts out so much content that you're like, um, you know, real hit and miss. But HBO is like, I would say, 90% a hit. And that's incredible. They don't put out the same volume of content, to be fair, uh, but they don't need to. But, you know, fantastic. Fantastic stuff. So Casey Bloys, good for you. I hope his star only continues to rise. I mean, he's been an exec he's been an executive for years, you know, before people knew who executives really were. Uh, but he deserves to be somebody that is uh, uh, in pop in the pop culture landscape. All right, so those are the three stories of the day. It is what time is it? Three forty. I shall answer your questions until three fifty, and then I will do shout outs. Any big I don't think any big stories broke. And then I will get then I'll do the Black Panther two trailer breakdown. That's right, Brian. Splitting up the numbers on House of the Dragon is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Jim says I think Ross's mustache might turn to red Hulk hair. You think it just blends in with the skin? That's funny, Jim. If you look very closely, it's there. That's hilarious. Eloy says, which unannounced DC movie and which unannounced Marvel movie would you like to see come around? And thanks for another cozy, interesting stream. Ah, Eloy, that makes me so happy you feel that way. Uh, unannounced DC movie? Um, I really like a good Superman movie. You know, focusing, you know, Christopher Reeve recently, I think, had a birthday, right? You know, of course, he's passed away. And they showed a wonderful quote from him saying that Superman, what really was the foundation of Superman's identity was that he was a friend to everyone, particularly as society becomes more harsh and combative. And that's even more true than it was in the 70s when he gave the interview. I think it was the 70s. 70s are, I think 70s makes more sense in the 80s. But anyway, I thought that that really hit home even today. And I was like, that's the trick. That should be what it is. So I would love like a Superman for all seasons. That's a great comic. Something like that is what I would like. As for an unannounced Marvel movie, um, I've always wanted Secret Invasion, but they're doing that as a show, as you know. Um, I can't really think of a Marvel project off the top of my head. Sorry. Let's see. Can we catch up on these other questions? Mate says, uh, Grace, what do you think about the movie Bros? Um... I think that, just long story short, I just don't think it was as revolutionary as Billy Eichner felt that it was. I mean, he said it was like a first like rom-com, you know, LGBT rom-com. I watched Uncoupled on Netflix a couple of weeks ago, and that was incredible. I also think it was uh, very adult uh, in the, like, with a lot of sex scenes, which I think always limits your audience. And uh, I think also it was a little bit like a soapboxy, uh, standing on a soapbox. I think that it was more, more preachy than maybe it, you know it should have been. And I think that it was preaching to the choir, 
Although I, so I go, I don't know. Like Billy Eichner was trending a lot yesterday um, because he had some. He was very upset about the way the movie did. Well, I, I don't. I think upset points paints him in a negative light. He's disappointed, a little accusatory, and a lot of the comments in response were. I think one of the reasons he trended was that a lot of people felt that his comments were inaccurate and that people just didn't care for the film. It wasn't um, a referendum on the LGBT community uh, or acceptance. Let's see. Jordan says, uh, glad to see you're back, Hope All as well. I was wondering if you heard anything at all about the Blue Beetle movie. He's my favorite superhero. I just wish more people were talking about his movie. Jordan, I think the movie's just too far away. I think people should talk about it uh, when they have some kind of trailer or teaser. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe with Black Adam, that'd be cool. Uh, I mean, they've really moved these things out so far. So it, it's very far away. I think that's the real issue. Also, Blue Beetle's just not a very popular character. So the movie has a bit of an uphill battle, but luckily they have a very charismatic star from Cobra Kai, which has a lot of fans. Madeline says, least favorite Marvel show to date. Oh, that's a good one. Ooh, I guess She-Hulk. Sad to say. I think it's just a bit too much of a downer. And it's been very disappointing for the last two episodes. Even Ms. Marvel, at least I really enjoyed the Khan family. I love her family. Will says, Loretta Lynn legend passed away earlier today. Sissy Spacek earned an Oscar playing her for Coal Miner's Daughter. I saw that, Will. I'm not very familiar with Loretta Lynn's work, but I think it's wonderful that she has been remembered so well. Danny says, are you excited for Anya Taylor-Joy and Chris Hemsworth in Furiosa? Ah, uh, maybe a little. I still feel very bad they recast Charlize Theron for ageism. She's upset about it. I feel very bad about that. Um, it's gonna, and I like Anya Taylor-Joy, but it's going to be hard for me to get past that. She, I don't think Charlize Theron gave her blessing to Anya Taylor-Joy. She was like, Hollywood sucks. Uh, let's see here. Max says, do you think Black Adam will have an end credit scene introducing Hawkgirl? Uh, no, because they're all on the Superman train. Superman, Superman. Let's see here. Let's see how the movie does. I don't think the tickets have been doing that well, the ticket sales. We'll see. Who here? Well, one second. Let me see the other questions. Who here has uh, Black Adam tickets? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, Francisco, thank you. A favorite Taylor Swift song album? Uh, I like The Man. Maybe I think that might be my favorite song of hers. I also like, uh, what's the other song? The one about chill out. You need to calm down. I think that, I like that one a lot too. Let's see here. What are some of the other ones? I'm really happy to hear Rings of Power is doing well. I absolutely love it. That's great, Junior. I'm glad. Uh, ben says, do you think Namor will be referenced as a mutant? Yes, they confirmed that he is a mutant. Henry says, hi, Grace. What do you think of Next Star taking over the CW and the change of leadership? Will there ever be a Green Lantern TV series? Well, the Green Lantern TV series was supposed to be on HBO. I think the problem with the Green Lantern series is that it requires so much visual effects. It's hard to do it, you know, cost effective. You know, maybe they should just make an animated series, quite frankly. Rashad says, do you think Marvel should move to the binge model for the Disney Plus shows rather than week to week? Um... Uh, no, because I think the week-to-week -week is fantastic for discussion purposes. These movies should just be better. Uh, Lu I mean, these shows. Lewis, I'm so glad you liked The Woman King. It was so good. Uh, N.A. says, not available. Any, any, great, any tea on the Secret Fall 2023 DC date? Uh, no, I haven't heard anything about that. I, I, haven't, I, I think DC is in such flux, it's hard. Jesse the Good Witch says, if they bring back Ross, I say they use Sam Elliott. It is the multiverse saga. If we're going to have all Hulks, let's bring in the Eric Banner crew. You know, Sam Elliott. Although Sam Elliott kind of stepped in it a little bit too with some of his comments. But uh, Max, I think I got your super chat, right? I, I think I just picked it up. Um, but yeah, I think Sam Elliott would be good. He also has quite the mustache. But I really don't feel that it needs to be General Ross. I mean, if if, if, if when actors die in the MCU, their characters are retired, that needs to be consistent because then it becomes a referendum on whose death is more important and also which characters are more important. Uh, and as I, as I tweeted, I feel like it's really insulting to T'Challa to, to and T'Challa's fans that they lose that character because Chadwick Boseman is, like, why are they punished because Chadwick Boseman did such a good job? I mean, that's, that seems just crazy to me. I mean, a lot of people uh, were like, William Hurt has a very bad background. And that's true. He was accused of some pretty horrible things. Um, 
it's always tough with that though because you know he was never arrested you know you know it's hard to judge people and it's a he said she said situation although i think you know who was it marley matlin i think marley matlin's you know why would she lie about that so uh and it's always tough when these things come out after someone's died because they can't defend themselves but yeah I, I have no interest in protecting william hurt's legacy uh so but i mean who the hell cares about general ross Who's like, we need General Ross for this story? You do not at all under any circumstances. Corey says, thoughts on six horror movies debuting at number one this year. Horror is a workhorse. That's why the, uh, Hollywood loves horror because it always does quite well. And I think particularly now, if you want to go to a theater and you're not going to wait for streaming, you want to have that shared experience. And I think a horror film is really good for that. Bo says, hi, Grace. Do you see that Hocus Pocus 2 is the biggest Disney Plus premiere to date? I'm not I did see that. And I'm not at all surprised. Uh, it's very, very popular. Uh, I'm glad it did so well. I enjoyed it. I actually liked it, and I thought I was going to hate it. Finn says, Dewanda Wise for Storm? Since she didn't make it as Maria Rambeau, this could be a better opportunity for her, and she has the look. Uh, I wanted to go with a little bit more of a darker-skinned actress because of the rampant colorism in Hollywood. But I do like DeWanda Wise a lot. I want DeWanda Wise to have all the opportunities possible to her. I think she was very good in, in Jurassic Park. Very, that last Jurassic World. So let's see your Black Adam tickets here. Here we go. Some of you have them. Some of you are not seeing it. Brian says, I bought my Black Panther tickets and forgot Black Adam tickets were on sale. <laughs> That's funny. I Don't Care Bear also didn't know they were on sale. Yeah, they dropped them, I think, like on Friday. Al Watch has tickets for Sunday and Saturday. Oh, I hope the movie's that good. I know some people are starting to see it on Thursday. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to see it. That's a little, maybe those people are doing the junket, but um, I should be seeing it soon. Mm -hmm. Some of you have tickets. That's great. Let's see here. Calligan says, we'll admit I saw the leak for Quantumania trailer and Kang looks awesome. I did not look at that because how am I going to react if I see the trailer? Um, I'm not, I think a trailer probably will come out with, with Black Panther. Exciting stuff. Brian says, do you think Netflix uh, should move to week to week and ditch the binge? I think for some titles that might be a good idea. Um, people really, I mean, I think they're releasing, I think that their Netflix's biggest problem, in my opinion, is that they really should move to a month theatrical window, or maybe even a little bit longer, because they're dropping some major movies on their streaming service. I think they're just getting lost in the streaming discussion. Chad, I'm glad that Just Like That is still filming. I'm glad you're such a big fan of that uh, movie, of that show. Let's see here. Alex, yeah, I'm not surprised you had to stop watching Blonde. I'm glad that, I mean, I, 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 a lot of people had a problem that I said I wasn't going to cover it in any capacity. And then, uh, you know, I was ahead of the curve on that controversy. And sure enough, it, it blew up. And I stood true to my word. I did not cover it at all. I don't, I don't give that any attention. I don't even want to give it a bad, I don't even want to give it a bad review. I don't want to talk about it at all. Max Rollo says, any updates on the Beauty and the Beast Disney Plus show with Rita Ora and Luke Evans? That got canceled, Max Rollo. Remember, Josh Gad was like, it was canceled. Josh Gad's probably very sad that you didn't even remember he was a part of it. Let's see, I skipped some of these things here. Hold on. Hold on, it, it fast forwards sometimes, and I don't see what you're talking about. Let's see here. Al watches, I got tickets for Saturday and Sunday for Black Adam. Yeah, I, just, I already saw that. Uh, I'm going to buy a Black Adam popcorn bucket. Yeah, those are pretty cool. If you collect them, that's a good one. Cam Creative says, my opinion on bros after seeing it is that Billy Eichner just isn't a draw. I would have loved it if Dan Levy was the lead. You know, that's so funny you say that, Cam Creative, because there's a joke in that movie that I saw as one of the clips to promote it where someone said to his character, you look like Dan Levy. And I was like, that really rubbed me the wrong way because I love Dan Levy. And I think Dan Levy is such a kind, nice person. And it was almost, in my opinion, like Billy Eichner was saying that he should have Dan Levy's career, but he doesn't. And I thought that was horrible. I thought that was, I, I, I can't believe that was in the movie. Dan Levy would have killed it. Uh, you know that you know that um, Kristen Stewart uh, lesbian Christmas movie. I watched that just for Dan Levy, because I love Dan Levy so much. 
Devin Henderson says, do you think directors like Mike Flanagan or the Duffer Brothers would ever be interested in Marvel projects? Um, for sure. Mike Flanagan, boy, there's someone who should direct Blade, maybe. Uh, I think the Duffer Brothers will get a very fat contract as soon as they wrap Stranger Things. Right now, they're just so deep into Stranger Things 5 that they just can't think about doing anything else, but they will do a big movie for sure. And I wouldn't be surprised if Sean Levy, who produces and directs some of the Stranger Things episodes, was some, has somehow involved. So wherever Sean Levy has relationships, I suspect that's where the... Um, where the Duffer Brothers will go. And Sean Levy has followed Ryan Reynolds over to Marvel and, of course, is directing Deadpool 3, so I suspect the Duffer, Duffer Brothers will go to Marvel, if I had to guess. Uh, da, da. Did I miss anything else? Finn, I answered your question. I'm sorry I took so long. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Olivia Cook for Jean Grey, says Sean Turner. Um, nah, I don't see it. Uh, let's see here. Emax says, is the Disney Plus Kingdom Hearts show... Where did that go? Uh, sorry, hold on. This thing is killing me. The chat's killing me today. Is it in production? I haven't heard anything about that. It might be. I haven't heard anything. I'm not really following that. Uh, the Sopranos was ruined for me for, by She-Hulk. That's funny, Way Harris. I finally watched it during the pandemic, and I, I loved it. You should still watch The Sopranos. It's an incredible amount of television. It's so good. And then not available says any merit to Netflix purchasing Columbia from Sony. Uh, I think I haven't heard anything recently, but I think that that I think Sony wants to sell and Netflix is certainly a possible buyer. Danny O says, will Margot Robbie continue to play Harley if Gaga gets an Oscar? I, can, I feel like she could, if Dwayne Johnson can keep the current DC universe alive, then I can see her coming back. I think Dwayne Johnson would want to do a movie with Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. Like for sure. He wants the best toys. And I think even though she actually doesn't gross, I think she has the perception of being really popular in the role. So I would see that happening. But if the whole future of the DC movie franchise depends on Black Adam. So if Black Adam doesn't do well, I don't think that Margot Robbie will be Harley Quinn again. Although I heard that James Gunn was doing a lot of stuff with DC potentially. So I know that he really wants to work with Margot Robbie again as Harley Quinn. So, which is too bad because I really ended up disliking their take on the character together. Um, but, you know, and I don't think Margot Robbie would do a show, a series. I think she'd only want to do a movie. So, you know, I think, I, I think that's the only way I could see her coming back, maybe. I think James Gunn would really fight for her to come back. On that note, Matthew Blossom says, from what you've heard, Grace, will Guardians 3 be a big hit? I have to see a trailer, but it seems like a smaller movie than I had anticipated. It's, you know, but all the Guardians of the Galaxy movies were really isolated and, ins you know, or insulated. You know, they didn't really connect so much to the rest of the MCU. So uh, let's, I think we have to see how the trailer looks. It's very Rocket Raccoon centric. Uh, and also that new, that new dog voiced by the daughter from, uh, Borat 2, uh, Russian space dog. Uh, so, you know, let's see how that looks. Let's see, let's see here. Alawatch says, will Tiffany Haddish get cut from Haunted Mansion? I, too early to tell. Too early to tell. Yeah, Cosmo, Kim, that's the name. Thank you. Uh, Jason Bateman is Dracula, Dante? That's funny. Is that a, is that a story or is that just a, something you would like to see happen? Oh, it's 356. See, I love talking to you guys. I love talking to you. I always go over. All right, let me do some shout outs. Uh, so just tell me basically what you're up to. And I, what, if you're eating anything, if you're doing anything, just so I can interact Chad, I saw that about uh, just like that. I commented on your co uh, comment. Kevin says, taking a break at my Midtown office. Awesome. Ah, oh, thank you, Darren. That's a nice photo, Darwin. Let's see here. Madeline says, about to take a nap. Have a ton of, had a ton of work recently. Ah, oh, well, that's, I'm glad you're taking care of yourself. Haunted Autumn says, enjoying the crisp autumn weather in Minnesota. That sounds so good, and I love your, your username. But I'm, that's great. 
Danny says, looking for apartments in New York City. That's, that's, a, that's a contact sport. Good luck. Uh, Max Kiddo says, laying in bed, enjoying my day off, binge watching Project Runway. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Juan says, are you ready for the Mario movie teaser tomorrow? Isn't that Thursday, Juan? Didn't they say Thursday? Because that's when their panel is at New York Comic Con. Junior says, stuck at work, count time, counting the time down to 5.30 so I can go home. Aw. Juan says, have you seen Amsterdam? I saw it last week. Oh, frowny face. No, I have some friends, as I said before, who want to go. And so I waited to go with them because that's not really a movie I want to see twice. Nicholas says, hey, Grace, I really start, recently started The Office and I can't stop watching and it's so good. Have you ever seen it? If so, who's your favorite character? I love The Office. Right now I'm working my way again through Frasier. Uh, it's so well written. I'm having such a good time. I haven't watched The Office in a very long time. I, I mean, I used to watch it when it was on the air. I really like Michael Scott, I guess, and Jim. But that, they had a really great cast. It is Thursday, right? You scared me about the trailer for tomorrow. I was like, what? Let's see here. Oh, look, Way Harris is headed to band rehearsal. That's fantastic. Keith says, eating some hickory-flavored chips. Glad to have you back. Aw, thank you. Lloyd says, Grace, spending the, the my day off with you and the BTT community in a very chilly Virginia. Aw, brr. But it's holiday season. It doesn't matter that it's getting cold because uh, that means that, um, you know, it's time for the holidays. I'm very excited. I put out some of my Halloween decorations yesterday. I'm going to put out some more this week. David Quevedo says, eating a salad with raspberry dressing and almonds while enjoying the stream. Aw, that sounds like a delicious salad. Let's see here. Darwin says, on my bed, bed bunk on a four-hour break flying back to L.A. Flight attendant here. I was like, where are you on a bunk bed? That's so cool. You're in a secret bed bunk. Uh, Thanks for your videos, Grace. Your videos make me feel right at home every time I'm away. Oh, that makes me so happy. That's such a cool job, Darwin. Nor says, do you think Avatar and Black Panther will harm each other at the box office? I'm very curious to see. They're very similar movies right back to back. Harlequin Dove says, about to get Tristan, my son, off the school bus. Oh, that's so nice of you. I'm sure Tristan will be delighted that you're greeting him uh, right after school. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Back to your comment, Nor. I think that I've been really impressed with the Avatar trailers. So uh, uh, that movie could be really good. Benz is about to watch the finale of Blackbird in Hungary. That was an incredible season or series finale. Enjoy it. That was such a good show. Oh, yeah, Lewis Dwight was fantastic on The Office. you got to have a good foil. He was fantastic. Rashad said, enjoying cookies and cream, ice cream, and this lovely live stream before I get ready for work. Hey, you can't eat that at the spa, Rashad. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Calligan says, just got home, watching the, watching the rain in Pennsylvania. Aww. Yeah, we, got, we have the remnants of Ian up here. As you can see, it's very rainy today. Linda says, glad to be back on the live. This membership was gifted to me. So thankful. Oh, I'm so glad, Linda. I'm glad you're making the most of it. You're a very welcome member. Bo says, watching the fall movie after the live stream. Like the fall? The fall? I was thinking of watching You've Got Mail. I watched When Harry Met Sally at the beginning of the fall season. and I Because I saw people being like, oh, it's fall. Time to watch When Harry Met Sally. And I was like, is that a thing people do for the fall? So I was like, okay, I'll watch it again. It's on HBO Max, so I didn't have to pay for it. And I was like, that, that was a fun fall watch. So now I'm thinking I should watch uh, You've Got Mail, which is on Hulu for free. But I remember seeing that when it came out. And it was so long ago, I just remember it vaguely. And I remember it not being good. So I don't know. But I just can't watch Frasier all the time. <laughs> oh, look, Callaghan likes it. Oh, so maybe I should watch it. They act, they, at that restaurant, at that movie, they eat at an actual restaurant on the Upper West Side, which I think is still here. It was there before the pandemic. Lewis, I haven't seen the Emancipation trailer. That's the new Will Smith movie, right? Dabney Coleman's in You've Got Mail. Maybe I should watch it. Maybe I'll watch it tonight. Millie Joe says, watching Halloween before Halloween ends. I heard Halloween ends was bad. Like, yikes. Uh, Owl Watch says, have you seen Easy A? Yes, I love that. Emma Stone's breakout role. 
AJ Jones says, I'm currently watching MASH and Golden Girls. Golden Girls. I watched that during the beginning of the pandemic. It was amazing. Anna Reckless says, just got back from Avengers Campus uh, at Disneyland. Paris. Oh, wow. You're in Paris and Avengers Land. Oh, I'm so jealous. You know, I never used to understand why people would rewatch sitcoms. I was like, that's a huge chunk of time. And why would you watch, like, is there any rewatchability in a 30-minute special? But there really is, because there is an arc that goes across the seasons. And it's, like, really good. Uh, I think actually rewatching sitcoms is incredibly rewarding. I rewatched during the pandemic. I watched Golden Girls. I watched Friends. And I watched Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory was great. That it was just great stuff. All right, I better get going on that Black Panther breakdown. Uh, it'll be up uh, by the end of the day. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, lots of coverage coming this week. We've got what's going on this week. Uh, maybe Andor will be good tomorrow. I'm going to make sure I get up early so I can watch Andor in case something amazing happens because I only saw the first four episodes. Uh, what else? Thursday, Daredevil is going to be on She-Hulk. So I'm getting up. That will definitely go up on time. I'm getting up like at 2 in the morning still so I can do that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, then Werewolf by Night. I can review that. And then, of course, I'll do a breakdown on Friday. There's a Super Mario teaser on Thursday. And then House of the Dragon again on Sunday. Oh, man, there's some good stuff this week. It's a good week. It's a good week. It's a good week. So, again, I'm very, very sorry that I was off yesterday and I didn't get to do movie math either. It feels like I took a very long break, but it was only two days. But thank you very much for understanding that, and I'm glad that everything's back and we're going to have a good time. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day, and uh, remember to check back for that Black Panther uh, breakdown. All right, bye. See you tomorrow.